Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by Gary Spain and we're here to do the final word from Republic of Ireland 1, George and Neil Connor Hurlhin free kick. But uh, we start things off basically with the, the lineup now. Um, obviously, Matt Doherty was dropped and so was Sean McGuire and Glenn Whelan came in for him and Robbie Brady came in um, to replace the two of them. What were your thoughts kind of going into it? A lot of people were shocked by Glenn Whelan uh, being starting. Yeah, no, I well, I wasn't shocked by by Glenn Whelan. I think we actually, I, I like Glenn Whelan. I yeah. think we need him for the the bigger games against the tougher teams, and even I, I, I was quite nervous about last night. So, um, yeah, I wasn't surprised Glenn Whelan started. I was surprised that Robbie Brady came in for Matt Doherty. Um, he didn't have a great game in Gibraltar, but he's probably going to be the only Irish player. If, if any in the Premier League team of the year and I I would have persisted with him I think we need to but we got the win we got the result so yeah or even as that right winger so you just have to have to actually worry about what's going on behind him but yeah I know I got what you're saying and I've been kind of saying like Glenn Whelan has never really done a whole lot wrong and has always been this scapegoat for when things do go wrong it's Glenn Whelan's fault and you know I think last night he was actually played in his proper position where he just kind of mops up things in front of the back four and just gives it off simple. Yeah, and he, he does he does a lot of the on-scene work, a lot of the ugly work, a lot of the dirty work that maybe fans don't appreciate. I think I, 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 I think his last game was, or his last start maybe, was the, the draw in Georgia that time. I think, did he not start in that game? It was meant to be his testimonial. Oh yeah, but sorry, his last competitive oh, yeah, oh, start. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the last, um, I, I think. I think he was subbed off in that game, was he? Yeah, I think so. If I remember rightly, he was certainly the scapegoat after yeah. that, and. Uh, and he never really recovered. I thought from that till obviously last night. No, but um, he's having a fantastic season with Villa. So I think, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I'm glad. I, I think he's going to. He probably won't start at home to Gibraltar, which I don't understand. But he'll definitely start in Copenhagen. I think. If yeah. That, if James McCarthy's not playing by then, but he probably won't be because yeah. it's in June. Yeah. So you never know what kind of what will happen there. But uh, we started off uh, really, really well. We had, I think, five five attempts in the first fifteen minutes. Yeah, it was a, it was a really positive start. I really liked. We had a, played at a very high tempo. We really got up. We got at them. Um, more like the Irish teams of old. Um, trying to remember when we last played like that, but just just got up, went at them. Um, press them high up the pitch. Uh, really unlucky not to go ahead in the first fifteen minutes. You yeah, said we was, created so many chances. Yeah, there were so many good chances. Like um, obviously the the Hurahan chance uh, where Hendrick w wins that was a great tackle. Wins the tackle yeah. um, and then it falls. It fell down to uh, Hurahan, I'm pretty sure. And then I thought he could have squared it into to Brady, and Brady wasn't wasn't happy, but. You could kind of see where he was coming from. He hadn't scored for for Ireland before, and he, he seen his name in the lights. Yeah. Um. And unfortunately, he didn't score. But I mean, it was again. Yeah. It, it got the crowd kind of get the the crowd up off their seats. Going, oh, here we go! Like we're actually looking. We're going to score because how many times in the last year, maybe year and a half, have we even looked like you know scoring a goal? Or, like if we do score a goal, they're never anything glamorous or anything like that. You know, we actually play. Yeah. We're playing decent, good football. I thought David McGoldrick was at the heart of everything. Oh, he he was superb. I mean, I, I was actually a little bit surprised to see him play as the target man as opposed to number 10. But he, he had a fantastic game and he got some ovation when he came off and richly deserved. Yeah, I'm rightly yeah. so, 100%. And I, the thing I liked about it, and I was saying to a lot of people last night, is um, he... The difference between himself and maybe Shane Long is that Shane Long's quite small, yeah? Um, he has a good leap on him, but that's not really any good if you're coming against defenders that are twice the size. Of you, you know what I mean? So the fact that he has a good frame about him, McGoldrick, because you can actually come. There was a point where he Randolph hits a goal kick and he comes and just chests. It actually was. A, it was. It actually kind of made a chance for himself. It was a volley on the edge of the box, then. but he chests it down, lays it off to someone, gets to the edge of the box. I remember Kane kind of spun up and he volleyed it. And I think it just went just wide. But the difference being is that when we actually get the ball up the pitch, instead of it coming straight back at us, we're actually keeping the we're keeping possession, and he's getting the ball down, and he's bringing other players into play, 
And also, as you said about Glenn Whelan, is the fact that he was sitting in there was allowing the likes of Hura and, and Hendrick to get into the box. I've never seen, I haven't seen Hendrick, you know, be that energetic in a long, long time. He he was fabulous last night as well. So yeah, you know, probably going back to 2016, um, if not quite to the Euros, but certainly the, the autumn of 2016 was probably the last time that I can remember him making such an impact. Just going back to McGoldrick, I mean, as you say, he's very good at holding up the ball and that'll be crucial when we go to places like Denmark and Switzerland. Um, he, he's also very good to see a pass and to flick a ball on for somebody. He would still um, benefit maybe from having a Shawnee Maguire or Hope Femi or whoever ahead of him. Um, Just to put the ball in that really, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was a very good point about Glenn Whelan because uh, Hendrik and Horahan were able to, to drive on and to, to support the attacks. I think they could do it with a lot more confidence that the house was being minded at home. Yeah, so. I mean, as well as that, I think it goes to show the, the power of Mick McCarthy and the fact that he's actually trying to get the players into the box. He's encouraging our midfielders to get into the box when we're, when we're getting chances. And, you know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. Like, like that was pretty much identical to a man on the old team, maybe bar David McGoldrick, and I don't know, maybe Enda Stevens. But it was pretty much identical to Martin. It didn't look like a Martin O'Neill team whatsoever in terms of their energy, their their will to fight for for the for the jersey for the team and for the fans, I suppose you could say. You know, uh, McLean was getting stuck in. I thought a lot of people were, were kind of saying he had a bad game. I think he was... Normally, I don't think McLean's great, but I didn't think he played, you know, any... Like badly, or I, I, I didn't think he had a bad game. No, I he wasn't say that. He was I, I, I just think where he's coming from. I mean, two years ago he was our player of the year, and now he's probably watching <clears> his place on the team. He he did okay, and you can never question his commitment in a green shirt, but he's struggling a bit in the at the club, and it's probably showing that yeah, he's um, he's certainly not the player he was two years ago. And I'd hope he maybe gets a move in the summer to somewhere else and somewhere where he's happier. Yeah. Uh, getting back to the atmosphere, yeah, I, I look, last year was probably a lost year oh, for I Irish understand. football. Yeah. It was just such doom and gloom. It was, And I think a cloud has been lifted and I think the players are just playing with a freedom. And it, it was great to see the crowd really get behind them. Yeah, because, and they, they, they were responding yeah. to it, like you said. Like The thing about it is... I think Hendricks tackle on uh, on the Georgian player to set up that chance for Hoover. And I think that was a marker to say, right, we're gonna get at these now. It's like, no, no more plucky little Orlin, No more little, you know, we're gonna let us play through us. They were hitting people, getting in there. I remember McLean made it, made one as well. He smashed it off some fella's shin to put it okay. out for a throw, but just to say, you're you're in for the game here. And they made yeah. it intimidating for for Georgia. Whereas before, I think we've just been too nice to these teams and shown them too much, I suppose, respect. Uh, you could say. So, I, I for me, it was, I was just nice to see us actually get at teams and you know say, all right, we're gonna have a go here. And um, speaking of having a go, uh, we're just gonna get get onto the free kick here. But the the thing that kind of spoiled the free kick, I, uh, well. I don't know if it spoiled it for you. For me, it didn't really make a difference. But I just think that if you if you look at the extra minutes that were added on that Georgia did score from the yeah the, the tennis ball the protest I know, I the protest or whatever you I mean I I know Sky were counting I think it was only something like forty or fifty tennis balls so um, for maybe 50. from where I was sitting I I was sitting there down Randolph and I only seen the tennis balls down there but I was actually what, really watched the game today there was actually tennis balls in the other goal where uh, who were taking the shot they were yeah. yeah I mean I was in one two seven so I was closer to the the free kick and there were quite a few came from the the north stand as well as yeah they seemed to come from the north and south stands. Um, Sky reckoned their OB unit reckoned something like 40 or 50 tennis balls I heard 60 or 70 but okay, I mean it's yeah, tick for tack yeah, you know? for t- I don't know I mean I, I would have probably thought it was a bit more than 50 um, personally I don't like to see it I can understand why people are protesting but I really see it as a night to get behind the team it was an absolutely crucial game it, it probably worked in our favour for the free kick. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. who knows? The, the four minute delay, he may not have hit it as well. Yeah. Had he taken true. it four minutes earlier. Likewise, as you say, George, it could have equalised in the four minutes that were added on. So. Yeah. Um, do you yeah. think that? Do you think, in your in your opinion, do you think that 
that should be you know left somewhere else or done at a different time if you if you were to protest what would you go to Abbottstown or what if you were going to yeah you see it's a tough one I mean if they, if you throw tennis balls in Abbottstown there's no cameras and well, everything that's true. there I think um, they made that point known though so you can kind of see it from both sides of, sides yeah. of the coin you know I wasn't totally against it I wasn't 100% behind it either but you know you can I can understand fans frustrations and where they're coming from there's still a lot of unanswered um questions there that yeah. you know a lot of people don't even know about that's why a lot of people aren't talking about it till obviously whatever goes on goes on with all that other legal stuff yeah i mean there's well the stuff coming out in the newspapers we've got the the doll committee to come as well so i think we leave it and see what comes out of that you yeah know? i think that's uh, i think that's all we really can do um yeah. for legal reasons and stuff like that yeah. so um but yeah back to the goal what do you okay. think of the free kick oh it was a superb free kick just the way he bent it um a little bit of help from Shane Duffy in the wall. Yeah, um, maybe I wouldn't glad. fancy uh, bumping up against him. No, and I, I may be happy there was no VAR. I don't know what would have been. I think yeah. we look back at that, but uh, it certainly was a beautiful free kick and loved the the bend on it. Um, it's been a while since we've seen a nice free kick, you know, whipped in like that. I don't really can't remember Brady doing it for a while. I I like Brady's. He would normally have some great delivery from a free kick. Yeah, maybe not. Um, well, he's got a few pingers against, I think, Chelsea in the Premier League yeah, Burnley, so right, like, he's yeah. well capable. Yeah. He just hasn't really done it for Ireland, but then, you know, Ireland games are very seldom, and he's been injured. So yeah. You kind of so, have to look at that. Yeah. I thought he put in a solid shift last night, though. He did. I, I still, maybe he, he just look, he doesn't looks look off fully the pace right. A little he bit, doesn't yeah. look fully right to me. Yeah. Probably needs Seamus more game Seamus took time. a long time to get back from his injury, too, so you're going to get to give him the benefit of the doubt and yeah. hopefully see who he is. The problem with that, James McCarthy might have that problem because he hasn't really kicked the ball. Okay. as well so he might have that issue as well you know if he comes in and people are like oh, alright well here's Glenn Whelan's replacement you know what you saying about them man. Uh, if Whelan's to come in if McCarthy is fit but you know I, there's a difference between fit and match sharp yeah I, I mean I, I think James McCarthy has actually been fit in recent weeks but hasn't had the game he's been fit time. he just hasn't been playing yeah he's been playing so it's uh, it's a shame because so McCarthy yeah. actually told him to leave Everton to try and get some game time and he tried as far as I know Marco Silva blocked it but okay. I mean, you don't really know what goes on at yeah. clubs behind the scene. But um, no, just just in regards to the goal, I thought it was a fabulous goal. I mean, it was just it really got the crowd, and everyone was just really happy. Even walking out to half time, and everyone just had a, a buzz about it. it. Was like, oh, you know, we're going in half time here. We don't look under really any pressure, really, except for that obviously the chance uh, okay. at the late stoppage time. But we'd never really looked on in any danger other than that. No, definitely. I mean, it was a well-deserved lead. I think we the goal was was coming. Yeah. I mean, the first fifteen minutes, we probably should, with a bit of luck, we should have been ahead. Um, we had played with a really good tempo. We got at them, and if you play at that tempo, if you keep pressing and creating those chances, the goal is going to come. Okay, it came from a set piece, but it could have come from open play. It was, it was definitely coming. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I yeah. I agree with you on that. Um, going into the second half, then. Um, you know, I thought we were we were still playing well. You know, McGoldrick was was really tormenting them, and th- I thought they couldn't live. Him. I thought there was times where he was kind of coming a bit too deep to try and get on the ball. Where you rather have a centre forward. He's almost playing as like a false nine, I suppose you could say. Yeah, because he I think he he really is a ten more than a nine. That's yeah. what I see him as anyway. <laughs> and uh, now he had a great game, so maybe the false nine. I don't know. Yeah, long gone are the days of being a forward or okay. whatever. They've all yeah. got numbers now <laughs> instead of positions. But, so. Yeah. What 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 did you make of the, him dropping deep? And if, I I thought it was actually not so bad in a sense that someone like or either McLean's or someone would actually fill the void if needed. They were actually getting beyond if if that if he was deep, you know. So. Kind of see where it was coming from. It was nice to see a little bit of rotation. Now, it wasn't Salah, Firmino and Mane no. type, but it was good to see us try something different, you know. It was, and again, you know, it seemed to be an actual 4-3-3 rather than a 4-4-2, you know. Yeah, well, it was definitely a 4-3-3 and with the the, the, the option to go 4-5-1 if under the cash a bit. Um, I really like the fact we passed the ball. We, we passed the ball quite a lot. I mean, normally you see teams... Passing the ball a lot more than we do, but um, I think the stats were pretty much even. Yeah. Now, okay, it is Georgia, but I mean, <clears throat> some of the stats were horrendous in the games against Wales, for example, for passing. Yeah. And uh, so, 
yeah, and the 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 movement of the the, the front three was good. Um, McGoldrick definitely has an eye for a pass. Yeah, um, one uh, chance I actually forgot to uh, to mention was there was actually a bit a nice bit of play. Glenn Whelan has like a this was in the first half. Uh, he has like a drag back. He hits it. To, I think it's uh, Hendrick, and he played it to McLean. He got clipped to the edge of the box, and then Whelan actually took the the free kick. And uh, it looked like it was straight off the training ground. It was good to see us actually working on some things. Okay. And he hit it to Brady at the edge of the box and he skied it over. But while you were saying about, you know, it was passing and just showing a bit more uh, creativity and a bit more, you know, just, you know, stuff that people weren't expecting us to, to, to use. It was it was out of the norm, I suppose, for us. Because O'Neill never really practice anything, so they say. Okay. But, uh, yeah, like... Um, and then there was the the Hendrick off Soigo, which was a lovely move. It, it, I, I, there was quite a number, I can't remember the number of passes in it. There was quite a lot of passes in it, and it was it was a marginal call. It, what he, I think, I've seen it back. He was just off side. Yeah, but he had a left. The call and was there waiting well, on as well, yeah, you know. Okay. But it was great to see Seamus was so high up in the box as yeah. well. You know, you speak about Matt Doherty being at the back post, waiting for chances and stuff like that. The fact that Seamus is up there now and he's starting to really show the form of old and uh, it's great to see because he's been getting a lot of unwarranted stick I think of, of late and he had a couple of bad games yeah when he kind of looked at himself in the mirror he makes no excuses he's been interviewed about he makes no yeah. excuses and you know he knows that he, he has to improve and he has so yeah. you know what I mean he can't oh yeah look he's 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 he had a fine game and yeah. he's but he's never let the country yeah, down no, you know? no 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 I don't think he ever has let the country down to be I, fair to him some of the people I mean I, I, some of the criticism gets to me sometimes you know yeah. what I mean the, uh, Glenn Whelan in particular now he's someone I like and maybe I like him even more because he takes some stick from people and he still comes back he still hasn't retired and look um, your people like Glenn are a hero anyway in the way yeah. that they what they do and uh, even if they get the stick they still come back and they still put in a superb shift. Absolutely. Um, Seamus as well. I, I, I've actually heard very little criticism of Seamus. Maybe some more on the on the Everton side more mm. than in an Irish well, shirt. Everton fan, so yeah, see it more, okay. so, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's certainly he was a huge loss that injury against Wales. It might be yeah. a bit much to say it cost us a place in the World Cup, but it's he certainly was a loss. Yeah, but um, he's far better than Cyrus Christie, let's be honest. Yeah, oh yeah, there's, yeah, like, there's no contest. And even yeah. Cyrus has come out and said that himself, so yeah, he says, well, I would do well to get in ahead of Seamus, so that kind of tells you, you know, how, yeah, no, how, yeah. how high regard and, uh, and esteem they hold him, you know. Yeah, no, Cy, in fairness, he never let us down either, and yeah. I think people maybe well, give him a bit about of a lot of stick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stick. I mean, he was being played out of position, Midfield probably doesn't suit him, but he he certainly gave it everything. He was a, a very athletic guy, and yeah. uh, I think he's probably unlucky now in that we've got Seamus. Now Matt Doherty, I think, has to be ahead of him as well. So yeah, he's probably going to miss out except for injuries. Yeah, I, I don't see uh, I don't see Cyrus getting in there at all with the, with the two lads around, and I still think Seamus has about four or five years left to give at least. Um, that will tell whether his leg can kind of hold up. For that, but Doherty certainly will be there anyway. So, as you say, on that barring injuries, you know, I, uh, I don't see him getting in. But um, just a last kind of couple of things. Uh, Dave McAldrick, I thought he should have had a penalty. He was he was failed in the box, and you know he had he seemed to have a go at the ref, being like, "How did you not, how did you not call that?" So he should have had a penalty as well. So people kind of out of all the chances, I know we weren't that that clinical. And there was another chance with a great ball by McLean over the top. And uh, McGoldrick got in and rounded the keeper, but he just kind of ran out of the angle. That's right, he just t- just too heavy a touch. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it was a great run, a great yeah. pick out by McLean. I mean, if you if you, ha- you haven't seen it, watch it back. Like I had to, I, I rewatched the game today, and I just I was just super super. Fun. I mean, if yeah. if Beckham had done it, they would they wouldn't stop talking about it. But because it was McLean, it was oh he just hit it and hope it was a it was a really good ball, um, and yeah, as I say, uh, McGoldrick just ran out ran out of. Yeah, width on the pitch yeah. maybe if you had a chop the back and maybe doing an in wank go can you for uh, Arsenal was against Chelsea wasn't that's it? right yeah for yeah. Chelsea Chelsea yeah. back, back a few years ago now I think yeah, yeah. so if he, if he had it, maybe tried that but I mean look the, the fact that he kept trying and trying and trying everybody appreciated and as you, as you said yeah. when he came off the pitch he got a serious ovation and rightly so rightly so and one of the best ovations I've seen coming off Viva for a few years now you know mm, it's hard to believe he's 31 
and at no club wanted him in in the summer. Yeah, well, I think he said himself that he uh, he needed to make some changes and get himself probably yeah. fit and get himself right. He made his international debut late enough for us as well, wasn't it? So you know, he's only been around our scene for was it the last four or five years. It seems so. to be a case for a lot of players, Wes, Walters. Yeah. And the list goes on. Yeah, I mean, actually, I saw Walters. Sean Williams, the, probably, is there? Yeah, he's a little the late developer. I saw Johnny Walters score twice for the under-21s in 2003, the night before we played Switzerland in Basel. We won 2-0. And I thought, right, this is great. We've got a guy for the future. And I'd actually almost forgotten about him. And it was another few years before he came back. Or, always I know the way, he, isn't Always it? the way, you know. And uh, so... But yeah, there's still still a few years to give, and uh, I see Alexandra Kleb was still playing for Belarus the other night. <laughs> I don't know what age he is it's now. He's been around. The past, isn't it? Yeah, so um, with playing for a small country, maybe you, you just don't retire from international football. Hopefully, yeah. Well, yeah. we don't have we don't have a huge pool of players to pick from. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm happy enough if Magoda keeps playing like he did last night. I'd be happy enough with that. But uh, the two subs anyway when he came on. Like so he came off. Um, Aidan O'Brien came on, and Matt Doherty came on. Then, um, what what did you think of the souls? I, I thought they were fairly justified. I mean, he yeah, looked, they, he looked knackered at that point. McGoldrick. Yeah, well, I think yeah, he, he had given well. everything, and he, McGoldrick had given everything. So, uh, I think O'Brien was probably the right move, and then moving um, and, and bringing on Matt Doherty as well was. Uh, I, I I would like to see Darty start. I must admit. Yeah, I think a lot of people because yeah. he's like he's an exciting player, and we just don't we don't have a lot of them, and I think that's why people want to see him start and you know really have a go at teams the way he's ripping up for Wolves. I get where you're coming from with that, but I just thought and the funny thing was himself and Coleman linked up quite well when they came on when he came on. They did, uh, yeah, and much better than they had in Gibraltar. So yeah, um, yeah. I think the pitch might have been a factor, but people just go oh, excuses, excuses. I know. Well, it's it's easy now. Actually, looking back, maybe we'd be having a different program if uh, if they they hadn't got the performance last night. True. But, yeah. Um, and it was a bold decision by Mick to leave him out, and ultimately it paid off for him. Well, so, ultimately Mick got the win. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's that justifies, and I can sit here and say I would have played Matt Doherty or whatever, but Mick Mick got the win, and that's you can't you can't really argue with that, you know. Absolutely. Uh, the attendance, anyway, was, uh, I believe, 40,370, which is quite good, I thought. That was excellent. I, I remember back to the... I mean, we've had a couple of 1-0 wins over Georgia, but the, the one in 2015, on a, which was on a Monday night in September, and it was a crucial, absolutely crucial game because Georgia had just beaten Scotland. We were back in contention to qualify. There were only 27,000 in the Aviva that night, and we, maybe we were a bit fortunate to win that night we certainly weren't fortunate last night yeah and uh, yeah so I think 40,000 is a really healthy attendance for Georgia at home I would hope we'd get at least that for Gibraltar in June yeah we said it's a Monday night again but school holidays for secondary school students anyway and uh, if we don't have full houses for Switzerland and Denmark you can throw your hat at it you know for yeah sure. as you so, said but we did call for a lot of the fans especially on this show, to you know, really get behind the team. And, and they did. So And the players responded to it. You know, I think everybody responded to it. So i got to give kudos to both the players and the fans last night. Yeah, the players and Mick. I mean, and Mick, he's, yeah, he's, sorry, yeah. Yeah, because uh, there, was, there was a real... Um, even going in, there was a, a good atmosphere. It was a feel-good atmosphere. I mean, the going into the Nations League games in October was... Pretty depressing, apart from the atmosphere. Mm, the I don't think anyone wanted O'Neill there at that point so, any longer. Yeah, it's a pity he didn't go. Because, I mean, look, there were good times under O'Neill. I don't want, we, we beat Germany, we beat Bosnia in the playoff. We had, we had a mm, fantastic Euros Italy. in France. Yeah, we beat Italy, yeah. Um, so it was a great Euros. But, and and we had a great start to the World Cup campaign. We, yeah, we, it's almost what we, where we are now. But yeah, well, I mean, it, was, it was actually a lot better in fairness because we went and drew in Serbia. We uh, we won away to Austria. We were sitting pretty on top of the group uh, as 2016 turned into 2017 and we couldn't do it at home. Yeah. And it's probably been, maybe that's one thing that kind of, it reminded me of the last Mick McCarthy regime because we haven't been, 
you can point to a couple of home wins over Germany and Bosnia. I know Andre O'Neill, but going back to Trapatoni to Brian Kerr, we did not win at home. We were we were capable of trap could draw with anyone home or away. We haven't really been winning home games since Mick McCarthy was beating the Dutch, beating the Croats, beating the Yugoslavia as they were then, I think. And we were winning crucial home games under Mick. And now I'm not going to put last night at the same level as yeah, but it was teams. crucial to get that one. It win. was crucial to get that win, and it gives you that bit of optimism. If we can beat Switzerland and Denmark and Dublin, it doesn't matter what happens in Copenhagen and Geneva. We'll yeah, we should qualify. I mean, that's if we if we can do the business at home. If we've got the crowd behind us, if we're playing with that tempo, if we're going at teams. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the place is intimidating you know? as well. You know, players won't want to play there. I mean, and you, you look at players going to you know foreign places and they look terrified by the atmosphere. I know a lot of times when you know Barcelona, Man City, and something like that have gone to the Ukraine, for example, uh, yeah. for um, Shakhtar or something like that, or Dynamo Kiev. The atmosphere is so intimidating that they they those teams end up stuffing teams. You know, and that's what we need to we need to make a a cauldron. Yeah, we do. And I mean, I mean, if you look at Basel last night, there was 18,000 people at Switzerland and Denmark. I mean, there are two countries who would both expect to qualify. That was a crucial game. I mean, yeah. I thought it was a shocking crowd. No wonder they're playing us in Geneva. Um, I, I mean, we had more than double that at home to Georgia, you know. So uh, I, d- I don't think Geneva can would be that intimidating based on that kind of an atmosphere and... Uh, so actually, the last time we played Switzerland in Basel, the, the place was half empty as well. Yeah. In the, the but I think people as well don't really give uh, our defence and our goalkeeper credit. We've kept four clean sheets in the last four games as well, so, so we're not conceding. You know as well. I know we went scoring, but okay. The the <laughs> the first thing to do is stop the goals coming in, and then start scoring. So they've got one side of it, and now they've started scoring. So we are in a positive. Um, that's the word I'm looking for. Way forward now, um, yeah. And we just need we we need to keep that kind of buzz. Whatever about the protests and stuff, you know, uh, you know, protest now with the, the games over and stuff like that. And whatever happened with the tennis balls, or whatever they made their point and they had to do it at that time. So it would make the national TV headlines and stuff like that. So I totally understand why they did it, but you know. Really, when it comes to match day, I'd really like to focus more on the match and the team. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, and just getting back to the defence, another shout-out to Richard Kew as well, because, I mean, he played probably through the pain barrier. He had to have the pin yeah. inserted in his arm. Um, He'd head but his nan to win the ball. Right. And <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I don't, he wasn't in well, he wasn't in my team when I was picking the yeah, team last vegan, week. Yeah. And... Uh, He's in my team now, and I think he's in there to stay. It's, it's going to be Keown Duffy there. The, the, they've got the jersey at the jerseys at the moment. Yeah, and, uh, uh, barring injuries. Yeah. Um, I think in that in that kind of way as well. I think John Egan's a little bit unfortunate at the minute, but I think he's he's going to be one there for the future because Keown's not that young. I don't believe he's in his thirties at least. Oh, he's well in. I think he's probably 32, 33. Yeah. yeah so but, uh, like Egan, I think he's only twenty seven or twenty eight. Yeah. So um, there is still time for him to play, and you know you kind of look at. Uh, Shane Duffy, he didn't really get a, a run in until probably the Euros, and then he's been a mainstay now, and he's probably been our best player, and mo- definitely most improved player, and leading to, to probably our best player now. You know, he's had a really big rise, and, yeah. and hasn't really been given a lot of credit for yeah. it. Well, I think he was player of the year last year, and uh, probably, yeah, a really strong contender. Well, maybe Mr. McGoldrick will have something to say about that. But, or Matt yeah. Doherty. Or Matt Doherty. Well, that, it, 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 I wonder yeah. what way they do that because I don't know if it's a club level or international level. It's I, I think it's mainly the international level. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I suppose you can't really go wrong with Shane in that, in that aspect. But as I say, the four clean sheets and four isn't bad now. I know well, one was Denmark and then one was Northern Ireland. Yeah. And then uh, obviously Gibraltar and then last night was Georgia. But I mean, Georgia were tricky enough and they hit the post as well quite late on, which was a scare. I thought it was in. With four minutes to go, yeah, I know it would have been a total travesty had they equalised. Yeah, that I, I mean, we were much the better side and we deserved to win. We've had a couple of fortunate home wins, or maybe three fortunate home wins over the the one in Croke Park when we came from behind with the 
a penalty that thankfully the referee was probably the only one who thought it was a handball but um, yeah maybe go back too far but yeah we 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 certainly deserve to win okay they hit the post they could have gone in but yeah but we could have scored five or six we could and probably should have had another one or two more as yeah. well so, so you, then, kinda, you look at it from both sides uh, so I, one nil it's flattering I suppose for them it was. No, they're they're still a decent side. I, I yeah, wouldn't be but surprised. I didn't I thought before we showed them too much respect but last night we were like, right, we're Ireland, we're gonna put it to use and we're gonna show you what we're but we're not gonna let you play, we're not gonna give you time on the ball. Uh but they did for the for the shot for for the lad to uh, hit the post, the ball yeah. that number seven. Um Hendrick and Whelan kinda of stood off and I just let him have a shot. And you see Darren Randolph got up then half a dive and screamed at him like, What are you doing? Yeah. Close him down, don't let him have time. Because that was the only time I really remember him having much time on the ball. Because they were all, as I said, high pressing, snapping at people and getting in the faces. We were, but I think for the last five or six minutes, I, I was more or less playing out in front of me and I noticed they were actually trying to set each other up for shots from the edge of the box. And even they were hanging back. There was one of the crosses went in, was clearly going to be headed away. There was about three of them waiting to hit a shot and I was like, close them down, you know. But it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they're not. I mean, I, I think was it Mick or someone said on Saturday Gibraltar take points off. I Gibraltar won't get any points. I think in this group, but I I still think Georgia are capable of taking points either off ourselves, Denmark or Switzerland. Yeah, I don't know. well, definitely away. Yeah, in, in Tbilisi or maybe even in in Copenhagen or Switzerland. You never know. They they went to Wales and got a draw in the last campaign, and they 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 at least deserved their draw against us in Tbilisi in the last campaign as well. So. Um, it's no gimme. We'll we'll have to work very very hard to win out there. Um, took Switzerland the guts of an hour was it to break them down? I was watching it in a bar in Gibraltar, so I didn't um, maybe get to see the whole uh, the whole way the game was playing out. But certainly, I mean, they they made it tough for Switzerland. Well, Switzerland battled them. They only had eight shots on target compared to um, their one, but they definitely had. I think they had about. I think they had twenty five shots. Okay. If I'm if I'm if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But I think they had twenty five shots, and eight of them were on target. Okay. So I don't know why you call them attempts or whatever. So yeah. as far as I am aware, they battled them. Okay. So, but they only finished two 0 you know. Yeah. But just uh, for ourselves going forward now, I think we still take some good momentum out of this now. We have six points from six. We sat here at the. Uh, I was, Sat there with Mick McCarthy two weeks ago in the Aviva, and we said, "Look, if we're sitting here with six points from six, happy days. That's what we want. So you can't fault them for that. And I think the football has been a lot better. And everyone walked away going, you know what? We aren't amazing. We aren't Barcelona, but we had a go. We tried to play football, and we we did everything that all the fans had been asking us to do. Yeah. Uh, in regards to passing the ball, keeping the ball, mixing it up. There was long balls at times." But the long balls were like being taken in by say McGoldrick and stuff like that. So there was a lot more mixing it up. Just, there was not just a plan A okay, and yeah. nothing else. You know yeah. that was the good thing I thought as well. So like, okay, if we, if we need to mix it up, we can mix it up. And for me, that's that's it's it's shown a bit of uh, a bit of improvement and just a bit of a way forward. I think. Yeah, there, there's definitely the, the, there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. There was a lot of positive. Because there was looking like there was never going to be any again. No, and I mean, people were kind of even looking at the draw and celebrating that we avoided Holland and Germany and think, well, hang on a second, Switzerland and Denmark are probably hot favourites. No, they're probably still warm favourites to come out of our group, but yeah. we have a chance. The, the other thing is the fixtures have been really kind. I mean, yeah, we got the six points. We, we really had to get the six points. We will be on at least nine points by, by June because we will beat Gibraltar in Dublin. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, Denmark and Copenhagen, we've gone there twice. So we've gone to Aarhus and, and Copenhagen. We've got scoreless draws. Um, if we could get another scoreless draw in June, it would be absolutely fantastic. Um, or win. Or if, if we yeah, we're, we're being five, optimistic. Yeah. yeah, we're five points ahead of Denmark Yeah. at the moment. And whatever way you look, they've got a game in hand and they've played their toughest away and they've got a very decent point in Basel. But if we could win in Copenhagen... The gap goes out to eight points. With Gibraltar at home, it's not going to get any worse. I mean, you're looking at they've they've got some games to come in the, in the autumn. But we we would be looking like we're nearly qualified at that stage if we could win in Copenhagen. Yeah, 
Um, I'd be thrilled with a point. If we were on 10 points out of 12 by June, the Swiss coming to Dublin in September. Look, the fixtures, I think they've worked out perfectly. Yeah. And and the crowd, as you say, on our end, will will ultimately, I think, be the difference regardless. I don't see us going to Denmark and winning. I mean, uh, on an ideal, oh, okay. in an ideal world, yeah. yes, of course. I mean, I'd take it. Who wouldn't? You know, take, I'd bite your arm off uh, for that result. But uh, look, as you say, we could be sitting here in how many months is it? Three, four months? Yeah. Fine. You know, we probably have you back here do the okay. preview or whatever. And, you know, going into the Gibraltar game, as I said, nine points. And, you know, albeit we haven't played any real tough games. I mean, you'd argue Georgia was tough. But, yeah, I think... Yeah, we've got, we'd have have the points on the board and then the Swiss will be coming to Dublin in in September. And that would be the big one, I think. And there won't be 18,000 at that. Mm. So, and they they won't like it. I mean, if it's not sold out, I can throw your hat at Irish football, it will be. And I mean, you want to buy your season tickets early to get your seats for Switzerland and Denmark in the autumn. Yeah. But um, it's surely, there should be a massive demand now for tickets for those games. Um, I, 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 we were just chatting a bit earlier about the the other result, the the Switzerland Denmark three uh, three. I I I see Mick was delighted to hear that Denmark came back. I, I must admit I was actually very disappointed. I was actually hoping one or the other would take six points. Um, I, I suppose I expected Denmark to be the slightly the better the better of the two, and I had him at the back of my head. Denmark could be coming to Dublin in November with nothing to play off, play for. Maybe we could get a win and pick up three bonus points there. Um, the way it's worked out, it's going to be a massive blow to the Swiss confidence. You're three 0 up with six minutes to go. That's uh, they, they must be devastated at this stage. No, they had come off a good win in Georgia. Had they won in Basel, they'd be well on course. Up, well on course, looking like they they were going to top the group. Uh, I, I can see Mick's point why he's happy. It keeps both of them in the mix. Probably keeps the three of us going for the two places. Yeah. Um, look, it's still totally in our own hands. We've got the six points. Let's just go and get something in Copenhagen. or Give them a game. Yeah, I, I think we'll give them yeah. a game. And so yeah. they've been on the back foot the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that's pretty much it. Huge thanks to, to Gary for coming in on the show. Um, I've really enjoyed this chat actually. It's, it's nice to have a, a bit of a buzz back, you know what I mean? I, I can't remember last time we were kind of sitting here speaking about a good result. It's probably Wales away when McLean scored, but again, the football wasn't amazing there, was it? But anyway, um, it's it's nice to. That's why this one probably went on a little bit longer because we we're actually happy. The other previous videos we couldn't <laughs> wait to finish, but uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like this video, drop a like on the video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you all soon.